Hey friends, so I came down to my workshop and I thought I would try to dig up some old soldering irons because when they totally wear out and I get a new one, uh, I don't throw them away. I of course just stash them away under a workbench somewhere thinking maybe one day I can use those parts or I might, you know, maybe get a new tip for it or something. And, and um, sometimes they become obsolete. I've had a few irons in the past or over the years that they stopped producing those irons or they stopped producing tips for those irons. So it was like, well, then I have to try a different brand. And it is good to try different brands as well. The first one I picked up is this one and you can see it's very old and it's very corroded. And um, this is basically a screw off tip to replace the tip and inside this this is a ceramic heater so you always want to be really careful with your soldering irons that you um, don't drop them if you drop it on the floor like it could be broken because this has a ceramic element uh, that this is what this is you see that that white it has you know a lot of dirt on it from over the years but that actually is ceramic let's see if I can zoom in for you maybe not anyway that is a ceramic heating element and I know for many irons uh, they heat in different ways I like this kind I think it you know worked pretty good when I had it um, this is what the tip was like this big thing and as you can see it had this piece that went oh sorry huh, this piece that went over it and that very easily just screwed onto there and that's how you would change your soldering iron tip this is so old look at how that became corroded this became so corroded that it actually started to eat away at the metal and this you know when it starts to come up to here and start getting corroded you definitely you know need to replace that tip and in my new soldering book that I have coming out hopefully before the holidays I'm trying to get it all finished and together uh, I talk extensively about the hows the whys and you know all about that basically about oxidation and tips and all that so yeah this is one kind of soldering iron actually i think i might have another tip for this one yes i do hold on here's one here's one and it's the wider one this is the one that usually comes with the soldering iron and let me get my ruler and this is about a quarter of an inch uh, let's see Yeah, okay, so this is a quarter of an inch tip. This is called a chisel tip, and obviously you can see why by looking at it. It's flat here and here. And this is the kind of tip that I learned to solder with, to solder jewelry with, because like I said, I started as a stained glass artist, and over the years, you know, you perfect a technique or a craft, and you know your tools very, very well, and you use what you have to branch out and learn different things. So I did have a smaller one on here because for whatever reason I was using a smaller tip, but uh, yeah, you definitely can just use one of these, that's fine. And it does have a nice edge, you know, if you wanna do like little, you know, decorative stuff, you can always use the side. And you should always use, you know, all sides of your soldering iron tip. You don't ever wanna wear out one side of it. And if you, I don't know if you can see in the video, but this tip is actually tinned with a coating of solder and it goes on just like this. I think this one fits this, yes, because it looks about the same. And then this would go on top and it would screw in. And another thing with these type that screw on like this, sometimes I would find like, oh, it's not heating right or, you know, something's funky with it. It feels loose. And it's because, you know, when metals get heated and cooled, they expand and contract. And once in a while, I found myself like turning it off because this became loose and I'd have to like completely cool it down and then screw it back on. But that is one very corroded soldering iron. And sometimes, um, depending on the price of your iron, sometimes with your soldering iron, it's actually more expensive to buy parts to replace than it is to buy an entire new iron. So let's say this iron cost me $75. I'm just guessing, I don't remember what I paid for it. And let's say there's a kit with parts in it that might come with like this and you know maybe this or a heating element and it might be like $50. Well, you know, that's nice, but I can get a whole brand new iron with all new parts for $75. But like I said, I do save them in case I need 
you know, an old backup or I, you know, need a part from this for another one. And so this is the first soldering iron that I found in my workbench. And this is a really old one. This is probably one of the first soldering irons I ever had, believe it or not. And they last me a long, long time. Okay, the next one, the next one I pulled out from under my workbench, get ready for this, is this Weller. And look at that soldering iron tip. Look at this soldering iron tip. Did you see that? That is eaten away, completely eaten away. And that's corrosion and oxidation. And with this soldering iron tip, I looked on my workbench and I'm like, okay, what do I got? Oh, I must've bought like a bunch of different tips to try out. I never even opened this one before. This is a pointy one. These are more for use for electronics. Um, sometimes you might think, well, you know, I'm going to try that. It's going to be good for jewelry, blah, blah, blah. But you have to realize that there are tips made for certain different applications. And I talk all about that in my new book as well. So here's a couple. Um, let's see. Here's another one that looks like it matches that. And I'm like, okay, look at this tip. So this obviously was like an abused tip. And when I say abused, I didn't like bang it around or anything, but obviously I used the heck out of it. I think I might've used this in one of my books. And then I just set it aside because I had another one that I preferred that I was using at the time. And I obviously set this aside and it corroded. It ate a hole right through that soldering iron tip. So I'm gonna show you how we changed this one. And this is different. Now you see that there's three screws here and you know, you wanna leave those alone. I at first took those apart and I thought, oh, that's how I changed my tip because I was used to using the other type, but that's not it. So we're gonna move over to my other workbench and I'm gonna show you how we do this. Okay, so something that's indispensable is you need a set of these small screwdrivers if you don't already have a set. You can even get them in jewelry supply catalogs sometimes. They should be under $10. Sometimes dollar stores have them. Uh, Harbor Freight is a great place, probably a couple dollars. These are indispensable. They have both types of screwdriver tips on them. So you have the Phillips head, which is the one that looks like a little star on the end. And then you have the flat head, which is like the chisel tip. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this soldering iron and I'm going to undo the screw that is here right next to the tip. And hopefully it is not seized, which means like soldered to, <laughs> that the screw's not like soldered in there that I can't get it out because we could have a big problem then. But um, I'm gonna choose a screwdriver that looks like it fits in here. And I'm actually gonna secure this into my vise on my bench because you know, you need kind of somebody else to hold it for you and I only have two hands. So, okay, let's do that. Okay, so now I'm gonna position my soldering iron into my bench vise to hold it securely so I can undo the screw. And I'm gonna position it this way. And I don't want to like, let's see, I'm going to put it like this because I don't want to break it. You want to be really careful. That's all the inner workings are in here. Okay, so I have my soldering iron secure in the bench vice grip. It's not too tight in here. I always have like an old washcloth or a piece of cloth that you want to set when you take screws out. You don't want them rolling around anywhere. So it's smart to have something here to hold them. And then I have this tip, which I think is the replacement for that. We're gonna find out in just a minute. So I chose my screwdriver and I am going to insert it in here and hope, let's see, lefty loosey, righty tighty, I'm going this way. And it came right open, so I got lucky with it. And it is a very, very small um, screw. So I'm gonna set that on my cloth here and let's see if I can get this apart. So now I'm gonna take it out of here and see if I can by hand kind of move it and I can't. Uh, some people recommend plugging them in, warming it up a little bit, and that would be like my last, you know, thing that I'll try to do. I'm gonna grab a pair of old pliers. All right. All right, so I got these like, really dusty old <laughs> pliers and I'm gonna try to take these and I'm gonna try to just kind of loosen this and see if it goes. And it's not going anywhere, it's not moving. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna plug it in just for a minute. I'm not gonna plug it into like 
my rheostat or anything like that because I'm not going to be soldering with it. I'm just going to plug it into the wall for a minute till it starts to heat up and then I'm going to try again. So let's check that out. All right, so I plug this soldering iron in for um, just a minute, like literally not even a minute. And I have like just something damp. You want to hear that sizzle. You want to make sure that it's warm. Well, you can see it's smoking. So being being very careful, it is not plugged in anymore. I unplugged it and I am just going to very carefully try to loosen this up and it doesn't seem to be budging at all at all so i think what i'm gonna have to do is this is i could call the company maybe send them an email look for something online to find out you know what i can do for this or it might just be shot but the iron isn't too old like i said this iron i think i bought this iron or i got this iron um, when i was doing either one of my dvds or one of my books because um yeah, you need duplicates of stuff of a lot of things when you're doing that kind of work because you're shipping it out to another state to go do photo shoots. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this back together. Another thing I could try to do is I could try to spray a little bit of WD-40 in there. But, you know, you don't want to you have to be really careful because you don't want to get that into the electronic parts. And also when you plug that in, you know, it's going to be stench. It's going to smoke and you don't want to breathe any of that in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this aside. I'm going to let it cool down. I'm going to put the screw back in and try to figure out what I can do next. Okay, so I am back and I was unable to take this tip off of this iron. As you can see, I gripped it with the pliers once again, gave it a little bit of a wiggle and it went right down to the copper core. So what I'm going to have to do is spend a little bit more time, maybe do a little bit more research and possibly even email the company and see what they say or I can always swing by a, a stained glass supply store that's local and see what they have to say about it but I think if memory serves me correctly this was an iron I got as part of a kit and it wasn't a high enough wattage for what I needed and I might have tried it out a couple times and then just like you know cooled it down wrapped it up stashed it away for a couple years and that's probably what happened to that tip and um, because you can see like how new it is otherwise you know the cord is just like it's like almost like new so anyway thanks for joining me for this video i hope you enjoyed it and let me know what you do about your soldering iron tips do you have any tips or tricks and uh, how often do you replace yours have you you know what sides do you like to use and thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed, be sure to do so. And I'll be back very soon with a new video. I've been really busy this time of year. My kids went back to school. My daughter, I had to move her back into college, into a new apartment. So it's been tough finding some time to do videos, but I am getting back into my routine. And I will have a new video for you very soon. So have a great week and I'll see you next time. Bye guys.